Welcome, folks, once again to my Combat Channel News. I'm the Yakman Ron Yakavetti. Fabian Uija, the king. The king of Armbar. Always and forever. Here we first go. Show the segment, the first segment, rather, of the show alone stack. Could be its own show itself. Ultimate yep. Fighters, Ultimate Football Weekend, and Ultimate Females in Mixed Martial Arts. Yes, and uh, of course, we're going to follow up with the UFC 154. We've got a lot of a lot to talk about there. Let's compare both fighters, let's go over and let's uh, you know talk about this very, very good show that's coming up this weekend. Come Absolutely. On. We start first with yet again injury and we talked about this injury on a previous yep. show a while back. The knee for Carwin mm -hmm. as one of the coaches of the Ultimate Fighter is supposed to take on Big Country Nelson. Knee takes him out of it. At first they said it wasn't going to take him out. Now it's official. He's out. Replacing him an interesting choice, uh, something you think will give him a good fight, but not necessarily beat him. Well, yes, Matt is uh, replacing him, uh, replacing Roy, and uh, let's see, he's five and five and one. His last, uh, his last fight, I think, was a loss. His last, like, what else? He lost to Congo, right? And uh, he used to be an NFL uh, player. That's true, but no yeah. shoulder pads, no helmet. No, in this matchup for sure and yeah he was on a streak until he ran into the Congo yeah. train and that yeah. kind of slowed him down yeah, a little that bit. Was, yeah I think but if you look the fighters that he fought before was not you know as as good as Nelson so right. he definitely gonna run into a big guy that know how to punch and and the worst I think knows how to take punches yeah Nelson can take quite a few shots as if he has a helmet on not to mention uh, a very uh, maybe underrated, maybe because it's underexposed ground game. His jujitsu mm -hmm. game is, is is sensational, and that's you know if you're going to be a ground and pound like Mitrione, take him to the ground. He's going to be yeah. shocked by that, I think. I think that's what's going to be what's going to happen. He's yeah, gonna submit him? I think he's going to submit him. But again, let's leave him there in the air. We're coming back in a couple of days, and we're going to be able to see. You know, I don't think that guy can handle uh, Nelson's uh, ground game. So, you know. That's yeah, it. no, he's, that, that's going to be a, it's an interesting thing because the ground and pound might be an aspect where he mm -hmm. can win, but if he puts the game in that arena, he's opening up Nelson's entire jiu-jitsu arsenal, and that's not good if your Mitrione could end it. I think that is a likely end to that fight. Well, anyway, it's, uh, it was less, it's kind of less minute for him, but he was already training. He was supposed to fight in the next uh, right. UFC, so he was, not, he was not training. So he was training, but I uh, still less minute. Uh, uh, call and I believe that is the first time that happened on the that one of the coach get uh, injured he cannot fight. I think right. the first time that happened. That's anyway, um, John Fitch. Yeah, speaking of submissions, against Damon Maya. Okay. Two guys who got a good bag of that. I know. I it's interest. It's, it's a very interest uh, lineup. These two um, is the UFC 156 and the Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. Um, Again, John, he proved that he can, you know, he can do well. But also, his uh, victories are against the Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu guys. They all uh, uh, over decision. Yeah. He was never able, you know, to uh, knock them out or submit them. And if in that case, he better keep that fight stand up because Damon is not even close to the other guys that he fought. He's right. a way much better on the ground. Did he show that what he could do against Maya with what he did against Eric Silva? Yeah, but Eric almost submitted him. That's true. Okay, and that almost, almost doesn't right. doesn't happen, Damon. Right. You got it. That's my point. You That's think if he gives Maya as much as he gave Silva, Maya will finish him. He will. He will. He will. He's like he, he can get go that much, you know, that much longer on the ground. In my opinion, again, he right. does whatever he wants in his life, in his fight career, but. I stay away from the ground like with Damien Maia, yeah. anything else. And he's doing well too since he, he ran into some trouble with Marquardt. He ran into some trouble at, at the upper weight class. Mm -hmm. and, and since he's come back down, he seems to be more comfortable and he's put a couple of wins together now. Yep. So this might be a momentum that he can stay with even going into a fight this difficult. Look, uh, I spoke to uh, Marcus, that own bad boy, they sponsored Damon. And Damon is on the, on the, direction on mental mental direction to try get a shot for the belt so that's a good way right there if he finish you know this fight i think he definitely have a chance to be one of the you know the the water weight contender yeah and that is a that is a deep division to be in just alone we talk about ufc uh, 154 with you know with condit and saint pierre that's, exactly that is not an easy division to shine in at all even when you're that good yeah well talking about champion talk about uh, GSP, he let go that 
I have a hard time to watching uh, girls fighting. So he's not just a scholar, he's also a gentleman. He, he says he's old fashioned. He says, you know, he doesn't, you know, he knows yeah. that they're talented, they, they, that they have skill, uh, especially Ronda. However, he, it's, it's almost, almost like a combat sports mentality mixed with chivalry. He can't see women doing it. He just has a hard time watching it. He have a hard time woman, woman doing or have a hard time a white girl doing. <laughs> because you know he like a little dark, uh, you know, like a little darker that? girls. That's know, some like inside information for you people. Yeah, you, you know, like he's a white Canadian that like, you know, uh, uh -huh. a little uh, African American girl. So uh, uh -huh. maybe if it was, uh, you know, a little more darker girl on the top of that division, maybe he have show more interest in uh -huh. take a look. George know? Spice Pierre. Huh? Spice Pierre. You could change the S. That's all I'm saying. Inside information. Yeah, you know, it, uh, it may, maybe blondes aren't his thing. But clearly, he's a martial artist before a mixed martial artist, and you mm -hmm. can't help but admire the skill and the athletic ability of Rousey when you watch her perform. Hey, buddy, the only thing I'm gonna tell you is like, don't open your mouth too much because you maybe have a chance to be the undercard of on a Ronda Rousey on the fight. On the Ronda wow. Rousey, you know, Imagine main that. event fight in that, that. that, that you uh -huh. know, that can happen. I'm telling you, that can happen. So. Anyway, guys, I want to bring a hands up to my boy Steve from Fight Me Clothing. Okay, Fight Me is a new uh, clothing line that's coming up, coming up strong. He sent me this shirt I decided to send today. You're more than welcome to come and fight me as the invitation on the shirt. Yep. Okay, and the Fight Me mantra is whatever your personal fight is, if it gets uh, alcohol, disease, gambling, whatever it is. That's what it symbolizes, it. fight me, only. I'm taking on that negative thing and making it a positive. Yes, and Steve, hands up, bring that, sh that company to the next level, buddy, let's go. Yes, speaking of the next level, that we'll next level right for us is a commercial, and then we'll come back down a level and we'll join you again and talk about St. Pierre a little bit more. Welcome back, folks, to My Combat Channel News. If you're just joining us, you missed a little inside information on the personal life of George St. Pierre. Yeah, I know. We just included a whole bunch of women he likes and excluded a whole bunch he might not. I, I know. I shouldn't, like, Josh, please don't be mad on me. Okay, that, that was like... But if you are I, mad I at him, let that go. he says... Yeah. Fight me. Fight me. You need to go back on time so I can fight you on my prime. You can take anyway. it. I can, I can give him a hard time. Speaking of two guys who are going to give each other a hard time, UFC 154, Martin Kampman and Johnny Hendricks. That's well, a great matchup. Well, I'm, I have a feeling that's going to be the fight of the night. Okay, That's my feeling. Again, I can be wrong. You know, always, you know, everybody can have a take, but that is my thought. You know, both, they are hungry. Yes. I think when the fighter is hungry, they can do better than they already on the top. Okay? Right. And uh, both are hungry, and they know that the winner of this fight is gonna be uh, gonna have a shot for the tire. So. Right. Title contention is a Technical possibility for both it's guys. Not, it's not. It's not. It's for sure. Yeah. That is for sure. Yeah. It's like that's why it's lined up that way. Right. You know. So. But you don't always have that in a matchup that's a fight of the night potential. Sometimes one guy is is right on the cusp of getting a title shot, while the other one is trying to work his way up the ladder a little more. Both guys mm -hmm. ready. And in yeah, contention, but uh, yeah, in this case, both are very hungry. Yeah, you know, both are very hungry, and any any one of both, I think, never fought for the belt before, and so you know, I can just measure what come, you know, up in their mind right now. It's like, you know, I want, I just wanna, I don't wanna like end up my career without having a chance to get a title. To get a title, you know, you can go yeah. and you can lose, but at least you you try. You right, know? and if you go with the old right. adage coming from boxing, styles make fights. You got, you got a guy in Hendricks who's, who's a solid pedigree wrestler, mm -hmm. but he's got extremely heavy hands and he's been able to show that uh, in his, his last fight. And on the other hand, Campman, who's completely resilient, can take shots, finds a way to adapt and stay in fights even when he looks like he might be in trouble. That alone is a recipe for fight of the night. Oh yeah, for sure. And like, again, Martin is 20, and 20 wins, five loss. John is 13 wins, one loss. So. And his last fight too, uh, with Fitch. Yep. Twelve seconds. Landed the hands. Ended yeah. the night. If that happens again, again, and that way division, you never know. Yeah. You know? But uh, come on, guys. What the way? What else? You know, let's make it happen. Let's yeah, make it the best, the best uh, fight of the night. Pack another seventy-five grand and be happy.
Yeah, that, that is a, a bonus friendly fight if ever there was yep. one. Oh yeah, and believe again, me. In these days, if I'm back in fight, I've been looking for that bonus like crazy. I yeah. don't even care about my purse. I'm like, I want a bonus. <laughs> you know? I want the best fight of the night. I want the best submission of the night. Give me 150. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Extra. Here we go. The tip jar on the outside of the cage. Anyway, guys, let's go jump into the MMA top 10 heavyweight division brought us by Share Dog. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, this is Aaron Gales, and this is your top 10 heavyweight division. At number 10, we have Travis Brown. At number 9, we have Antonio. Bigfoot Silva. At number eight, we have Josh Barnett. Number seven, Shane Carwin. At number six, we have Frank Muir. At number five, we have Daniel Cormier. And number four, Fabricio Verdum. Number three, Kane Velasquez. And at number two, Alistair Overeem. And at number one, the champion, Junior Dos Santos. Thank you so much for watching. I am Aaron Gales, and that was the top 10 heavyweight division. You know what good? It's like after the <laughs> UFC 134, okay, that's good, definitely, no, no doubt about it, but yeah. she's going she gonna to have to come back. Yeah. Because the, you the, think that the, the rankings are going to change? It's going to change for sure this weekend. <laughs> You'd be willing that's to fix change. a fight just to get her to come back here to change oh the rankings. Oh my God, that's going to change. Oh, unless, unless that GSP wins, and then that's the way it is. It's his number one, Condit is number two now on the on the on the waterway division. So right, as it stands right now. It stands, but like, see, you know. Isn't that it, nice in combat sports to have number one and number two fighting, huh? That's, yeah, that's yeah they, they should the be a one, one, number one, and the other one is one and a half. One and a half? <laughs> that's fair. Um, almost two. That's fair. Almost two. <laughs> Interesting now that on the cusp of 154, mm -hmm. we have a flashback moment from the history of mixed yeah. martial arts. Take off the one, we're talking about mm -hmm. UFC 54. Yep. And we're also talking about one of the guys who appeared on that event. I know, I know. We don't want to talk about GSP against uh, Frank Trigg. And the, 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 you know, the weird part for me is that we talk about UFC 54 and look like he's decade back. Yeah. Okay, and I fought on 24. <laughs> Oh my God! We're dating ourselves. I know. Yes, I find it, I just like. It getting. feels like it was a long time ago, and it, it, and it probably felt like it too for them. You see right here. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan quoted during broadcast saying that it looked as if Saint Pierre was fighting an amateur. He schooled and tooled Trigg, which is no easy task. Frank Trigg is a very Look, talented fighter. Tell me, I fought him. He's a very tough guy, and. Uh, and not only that, like he was, uh, like you know, the top ten uh, w waterway, like in right. his prime time. Like on the on the, on the prime time, he was like uh, you know, uh, one like a number two, number three. That's that's exactly what you know, like brought him into the UFC. He was doing some fights on Pride, right. and he got into the UFC. And uh, and again, that, that like you say, that fight was the day that. Either one or the other one was kind of keep going his career. Yeah. Yeah, that was a crossroads fight too. Trigg had a lot of promise. It mm -hmm. impressed a lot of people. Yep. St. Pierre was still a budding star, showed promise, but hadn't really hit the spotlight. Came out from one loss against Quite. Matt Matt Hughes. Right. He Matt Hughes to, lost. He had to make it happen. It's kind of like that. I need to make it happen. You know. Yeah. It goes back so. to your to your comment about the Hendricks fight too, with with being hungry. Yes. Exactly. Anyway, guys, we're going to commercial. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're not going. He means yeah. it. So anyway, this weekend, UFC 154 is a couple of different reasons why you should watch the UFC 154. 
One reason is like if you don't have nothing else to do. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's what it says on the paper. You think, like, by the way, oh, if who, you got nothing else that? going yeah, on, yeah, here we go. This is why you if should watch. If it keep raining in the in the, in LA, so you don't want to leave home. So yeah, it's just turn it on. Something you can watch inside the SpongeBob or this. You know what? It's not true. We got a lot of good lineups. Uh, Patrick against Alessio. Right. That's a good Patrick one. Patrick Cote, yeah. Patrick Cote against Alessio Sakara. So. Yeah, you know, and, and that is that is a fight. Again, uh, the matchmaking mm -hmm. on this card is really stacked. A lot of times when you get a pay-per-view, you go, I'm really paying for one, maybe two fights. You know what? Not the case this time. I think this is a really solid card. It's a solid card. But anyway, let's just take a look at the video and see if that you know, warm us up to talk more about the UFC 154. We're going to share our video with you. Now I definitely want to see yeah, it. Yeah, the UFC marketing team that does their promo ads could sell anything. Is uh, I believe they also is the same guys that uh, do the the 24/7 for show for, uh, for, uh, for show, HBO for HBO uh, for the that, boxing. That's what I kind of heard, but I can be wrong. Anyway, they do a good job. Anyway. Yeah, they do a great job on the promos. They've even made matches you kind of knew were going to go one way seem like there was a chance for both people to win. Exactly. That's well done. So anyway, um, GSP and uh, Condit, I think, I believe that that same thing happened to Tito Ortiz back in the days. You know, like they, they open that belt and who else have the belt and both have the belt and nobody else have, you know, have no idea right, with interim who champions and champions. the belt and then like they needed to come back and figure that out. So People used to say that you would have an interim champion so that you could take a fight that would maybe, you know, not be as big a deal, make it a mm -hmm. bigger deal, or make it a five-round fight. Maybe it wouldn't have been a five-round fight if it was just a main event. Or, but in this case, it wouldn't be the problem. So, what I mean for mm -hmm. you, you've had title belts before. Why give a guy like Khan uh, an interim belt just because St. Pierre was out for a little bit? Yeah, but again, that's because it's UFC is a big, a big organization. The small organization doesn't do that. Right. You know, like you have the belt, you have the belt, and that's it. Unless that you go ahead and you know you kind of tap off and say, look, I'm not gonna fight for you guys again, or else you know here's right. the belt, it's open. You know physically, the, you know the belt, the belt, you never give it back, it's yours, and that's it. But the tire, you know, like just moving on that. So, well, they do what they got to do, you know, to sell tickets. You right. know, also is is a good is a market, you know, for selling, uh, you know, the championship belts on the on the line. So anyway, exactly. Saint Pierre is hurt. You can't fight for a while. You yeah. have a champion still fighting in welterweight because of the welterweight champion off. But you have another one mm -hmm. who can be on. Let's uh, let's kind of like talk a little bit and compare these two fighters. The styles, yeah. The, the styles and the styles, the fighters. ages, the size. Yeah, it's it's an interesting matchup between both these guys. The age not too different. Condit three years younger. At 28, St. Pierre 31. Both guys, plenty of prime. Mm -hmm. Weight, obviously, a comparable. Kind of taller by a few inches. But let me tell you something. I got an exclusive picture of them together yesterday. You know how sometimes yes. to lose weight, you, you go and you do some, you, know, you go to sauna, some people go to sauna. Yeah, sweat it out. So check this picture out. Bring it on. Oh no, that's the one. He's uh, on the doctor, uh, and the doctor, and yeah, that's the one in the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> this is where depth perception can get you in trouble. There you go. Because you really don't know how close they are in proximity to each other looking at that photo. Exactly. All I know is that I'm going home and cancel my cable. I know. So that, that's, that's the kind of talk that, you know, that men have in the, on, the, <laughs> on the sauna sometimes <laughs> before. So anyway, let's um, start to bring it up the uh, the, um, the two fighters uh, to compare to each other. We have uh, we have some stuff that we can bring it yeah, up and we can talk about. One big thing that jumps out at me when you look at the statistics between the two of them going to mm -hmm. this fight, and this is a big intangible, mm -hmm. but it, it totally factors in the layoff time for St. Pierre almost in the neighborhood of double how long Condit's put off. Two sixty-seven days for Condit, 
567 days mm -hmm. for St. Pierre. That's a long way off. It is. Is age, there ring rust? Age 31 for GSP, uh, 28 for uh, Condit. So the difference on the age is not that 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 big. 511 to 62. Yeah. 511 to GSP, 62 to Condit, and um, 22 wins, two loss to GSP, 28 wins, five loss yeah. to Condit. So we keep going. Interesting know? thing here. Um, the finish rate for guys finishing their opponents. Mm -hmm. This not only plays to an, what you could perceive as an advantage for Condit with 80%, but St. Pierre's big knock in his last few fights with guys like Shields, when people let him kind of pace himself, mm -hmm. was he's not finishing anybody. We're not seeing the guy who demolished Frank Trigg. And this fight, I don't think he has the liberty of doing that. I think Condit is gonna be all over him like a cheap suit, and he's gonna have to engage and fight. I'm gonna ask you something. Do you know, do you know what boats used to have it, and they don't have anymore? What they both used to have, and they don't have anymore, yeah. outside of their virginity? Yes. You know, I, I'm I'm kind of worried about GSP on that one, but uh, okay. <laughs> you're worried about him. I'm worried that. about him. All right. You know, but let's keep going. Okay. You, you, you know seem to know a lot, so I'm not gonna question you. Jackson. It's not gonna be any or oh, oh, there's no Greg no Jackson, Greg no Yoda Jackson in the corner. On the that corner. Is right. Either one or the other one. That is right. And anyway, is guys, you know, we have fun here. I hope we have fun tomorrow. You guys have a wonderful weekend and we're gonna talk about what's just gonna happen this weekend, Monday. So don't lose Big us Monday. If Monday. you lose the fight, come back. We tell you what happened Monday. So have a good night, guys. Get your pay-per-view hours in, and we'll be back to talk about it.